Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my vlog. I'm Robin or A Hobbit's Reading List. And this week we are starting my August TBR. I will put a card up so that you can see that video. And I think August will be really interesting. <laughs> I have a lot of nonfiction this month, which I typically try to avoid. So let's see how that goes. I'm pretty excited because I've already finished a book this week. Uh, it is currently the last day of July and I finished Pot Hunters. Pot Hunters is a school story by P.G. Woodhouse and it's about this uh, boys school called St. Austin's I believe and it's all about their like sports day. So it's like it's weird um it's also Woodhouse's first published novel I believe it came out in like 1902 and it's a little rough compared to the other Woodhouse works that I've read for those of you who don't know I do a podcast every month with my dad where we read the works of P.G. Woodhouse and talk about them and discuss them it's generally pretty funny. We go off onto like a lot of tangents. So check that out. It's linked in the description. For Pot Hunters, there were so many characters to keep straight. Like I honestly can't tell you I, who the main character is. I don't think there is a main character. There's a main group, but it was just like very overwhelming. And then like there were times where it was very slow and to show you how much I didn't want to read this book. It's 120 pages and it took me five days to read. Most of which happened today because dad and I are going to record tomorrow. I gave it three stars. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. It was just like, it's very eh. Compared to like other works of his that I read, like even with Mike at Riken, which like I did enjoy the story. It just lost so many points because there was so much cricket and I just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> But like this, there was just so many people. And you know when you're like in a crowded place and you're like like very close with people and you're like this and it's like, oh, that's uncomfortable. That's what it felt like reading this book. Like there are too many people. <laughs> so yeah, that's done. I'm officially done with my July TBR for the most part. I'm going to finish what's tomorrow, but I'm still counting it because I've read most of it in July. But we're going to start on my August TBR. I already asked Siri which I what I should read. And she picked The Baddest Librarians of Timbuktu, which is my first nonfiction of the month. Out of four? Five? I think I have five. Maybe. I know both of my Jewish books are... All three of my Jewish books are nonfiction. And then this is nonfiction. Or... doesn't matter I'm reading crap ton of nonfiction this month so I'm going to get started on reading that I guess this will be really interesting to see how I do So I wanted to film really quick. I just got home a little bit ago. I finished Schmutz on the drive. Um, it was really good. I thought it was, I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> so because this is a new vlog, Schmutz is about a girl named Razel who's 18 and she is Hasidic and so the expectation is that she will get married very soon and start, you know, a life with her husband and within her community and, and go along with the expectations. However, she has a secret, and that is that she's addicted to watching pornography. So she's trying to not 
to watch pornography <laughs> and to meet someone that she likes enough to marry. And so that's that's sort of the story and, and how it goes along. I think it was really well done. I think it was pretty educational. Not if you're like actually interested in like learning the ins and outs of, you know, what it means to be Hasidic. I, I think it was just like, it painted a good picture and, and I honestly would like to know more information. So I'll probably take that upon myself, <laughs> but I thought it was, I thought it was really good. It also really made me want to learn Yiddish. I do have a book about Yiddish, <laughs> but it's, it's more of like a comedy type book. It's called Just Say New, I believe. I don't remember who the author is at the moment. Um, but I, I do suddenly like really want to read it. I, I always get like this whenever I read a book that like heavily features a certain language. I just like, oh, I want to, I want to learn. <laughs> I want to speak another language. Anyway, that was really good. That was really interesting. I gave it a 4.5. There were just some things towards the end where I was just like, I feel like that was a little sudden, but okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think, I think more people should read it. It was super good. And then my, so that's finished the July TBR officially. And I asked Siri which audiobook I should read next, and she picked Northanger Abbey. So I'll probably listen to that starting tomorrow. And yeah, we'll go from there. I didn't read any of The Baddest Librarians today. I don't remember if I, I didn't film after I finished Pot Hunters. I did read three chapters of The Baddest Librarians last night. It was really interesting. It's a lot of information. <laughs> It's a lot of information about a location and a period of time I don't know that much about. And so I'm like trying to like wrap my head around it. And so I will say it was sort of putting me to sleep. Not because it's not well written. It's actually very well written. It was just a lot of information that my brain is trying to like process. <laughs> so I will probably continue reading that. And now I'm going to go to bed. So I wanted to film real quick because I realized that I haven't filmed since Wednesday. Whoops. Not a lot has happened. <laughs> well, that's not true. Not a lot of reading has happened. I started Northanger Abbey on Wednesday. I listened to about a little over an hour. And then Friday, I went to work and got stuck in traffic, so I actually drove to work and it took me two and a half hours. Normally, it only takes me like an hour and 20 minutes, so that was fun. I did listen to another like mm, 40 minutes, I think, on the way home. So I, I have about three hours and I think like 19 minutes left in Northanger Abbey. So Northanger Abbey is about this girl whose name is escaping me at the moment. Ah, crap. What's her name? I know her last name is Moreland, which is not helpful. It starts with a C. Charlotte? Maybe? Maybe it's Charlotte. I don't know. If I'm wrong, I'll put the actual name, but I will say Charlotte for now. <laughs> you can tell it hasn't made like a huge impression on me I am enjoying it it's just like it's a little slow moving at times which I guess most people would be like well sure it's it's a classic and it's Jane Austen of course it's slow moving but like that's not quite what I mean but it's, it's about this girl who might be named Charlotte <laughs> who goes to Bath with some like neighbors of hers and for like the winter 
holiday isn't the right word because it's not actually about like Christmas or anything. Um, but she, she goes during the winter for like six weeks. Originally, she doesn't really know anyone in Bath. She's just going to go. She ends up making friends after like a week with this girl named Isabella. And she is... <laughs> Isabella's interesting. It... <sighs> She's one of those characters where I'm like, I don't know if I actually like you because I think you're manipulative, but I don't know if you're actually intending to be. I think she is, though. But anyway, so Isabella has like a crush on maybe Charlotte's brother and they're trying to get maybe Charlotte to essentially be with Isabella's brother. But Isabella's brother is the most pompous asshole. She doesn't like him. Instead, she has feelings for this other guy named Henry Tinley. Tinley? Tilney. I think it's Tilney, <laughs> who is just, you know, he's more charming. He treats maybe Charlotte like she has a brain. But the whole thing is that, like, is centered around, is around, is centered around, like, the literature of the time, like, gothic literature, which is sort of interesting. So there's lots of allusions to, like, other novels and, and writings, which is kind of cool, actually. So it's it's really interesting. I'll probably finish it tomorrow, quite honestly, because I'm only going to have like an hour left after driving to and from work, so I might as well. I It's not pulling me in. I'm, I'm interested. I'm listening. And that's sort of it. So uh, other than that, I haven't really read much <laughs> because Thursday, Stephanie and I had an all-day Heartbreaker Marathon. We watched both seasons. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. Heartstopper season two was great, as I predicted. And then yesterday was the whole, like, traffic debacle. And then when I got home, we went to a friend's house to swim for a couple hours. So I didn't really read then. And I went to bed. I'm going to really try to read today. But I'm also doing a lot today. <laughs> I've just had a lot going on. Like, I haven't been able to do hardly anything on my to-do list. So... I'm going to try to read today, but I'm right now I'm sitting outside my the hair salon that I go to because I have an appointment in a little bit for a haircut. And then I might go to Barnes & Noble. And then Chris and I have a reservation at this restaurant in my town because they have a sandwich on special that I really love. So, yeah, that's what I have today. I'm really trying to read. I want to read at least five chapters of The Badass Librarians of Timbuktu. Because I, I am really enjoying it. But I just haven't had any time to do like hardly anything. So let's, I don't know, see what I can accomplish. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I am very tired. Even though I went to bed at like 10 last night. I did read more of The Badass Librarians of Timbuktu. I think I read about 30 more pages. So I would like to get more reading done today. <laughs> I had set like a goal for myself to get to chapter 8. And I think I'm like halfway through chapter 6. So not as much as I would have liked. But there was also gymnastics on last night. So I was reading in commercial breaks <laughs> so it's understandable why I didn't read that much it's really interesting I'm confused not a plot isn't the right word because this is a real event <laughs> but where I'm at 
in Mali, there have been, you know, a spring up of different private museums and libraries about like different manuscripts from, I believe like the 15th through 17th centuries from Timbuktu because it, Timbuktu was this very like educational area where, where they were doing a lot of writing about, you know, culture and, and medicine and, and, you know, the Quran and, and all this sort of stuff. And then after that, it sort of declined. So the manuscripts that the whole book is about is from those times. So where I'm at right now, libraries and museums of these manuscripts have, have been springing up. But I know at some point Al Qaeda gets involved and I just haven't gotten there yet. So I'm just like, I'm like, okay. <laughs> so it, it is really interesting. But I wanted to sort of talk about the books that I got yesterday because I did get a haircut. And then I went to Martin Noble with Chris before we went on like a date. <laughs> so for me, it was a really nice day. <laughs> he had to wander around a bookstore for 40 minutes. So I feel kind of bad about that. But I'm gonna change my angle so I can hold the books. So from Barnes & Noble, I found Raven Song by T.T. Klune. Uh, I, a couple weeks ago, I bought Wolf Song in this edition. And so I knew that this edition was coming out, but I didn't know when. So as soon as I saw it, I, I grabbed it. Uh, I haven't read it yet obviously, but it is the sequel to Wolf Song. It's about Gordo and Mark from Wolf Song. It's changing perspective and probably going to be about like repairing their relationship. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited because Wolf Song was really good. Devastating, but really good. <laughs> so I, I'm excited for more. I also got Less by Andrew Sean Greer. I've been seeing this like every time I go to the store. <laughs> And I haven't picked it up because I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't know. I was very like wishy-washy about it. And then I saw it last night, I read the synopsis again and I'm like, it does sound really good. It's a Pulitzer Prize winner. <laughs> I didn't look at the ratings on Storygraph. I probably should have. But then I looked at like the sequel synopsis and that sounded really good. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get it. I can't tell you why I was so hesitant to pick it up before, but... I went ahead and picked it up. Les is about this author whose name is Les. Uh, I don't know what his first name is, but his last name is Les. And he gets invited to his ex-boyfriend's wedding. He doesn't want to say yes for obvious reasons, but he doesn't want to say no and seem like he's still like hung up on the relationship. And so instead he commits himself to like a book tour pretty much. <laughs> and, uh, gets into hijinks. It's supposed to be really funny, which is another reason I picked it up. So I was like, okay, okay, I'll try it, I'll try it. And then I also got The Secret Lives of Country Gentlemen by KJ Charles. So I'm just, I'm, I don't know, in my Regency and Edwardian era, I guess, <laughs> especially queer Regency and Edwardian. So this is about this guy, Gareth. <laughs> who ends up inheriting property. He'd been, I believe, like abandoned or, or not recognized by his father or something. So he was just like this like clerk. Uh, but when his father died, he inherits this land and house. And so he goes and while he's around there, he ends up reuniting with this guy that he had, you know, been with. Uh, and this guy had left after their, their time together, which was deeply upsetting. <laughs> this guy, Joss, <laughs> is the leader of a gang <laughs> of, I believe, highwaymen. And there's something happening where they, they keep running in together and they have to team up together. And in doing that, they're like, oh, I have real feelings for you. So, <laughs> I don't know. I think I need, like, it sounded really good, and I know that I had seen it on NetGalley before it was published, and I thought it sounded really good. I just didn't request it yet. And I think I just wanted, like, a palate cleanser from something fabulous, because it was so hard to get through that book 
because of the side characters that I'm hoping that this will make up for it. I know it's a completely different story, but I just need something like in that same flavor to hopefully just like be better, just be better. <laughs> so those are the books that I got at Barnes & Noble. I'm gonna try to finish Northanger Abbey today. So we will see how that goes. And yeah, that's kind of what I got. It's a sort of a slow reading week, unfortunately, but I've just been busy with other crap. <laughs> Not crap, it was, most of it was like very fun, but I gotta step it up. So I will check in with you guys tonight with how I did with Northanger Abbey. I finished reading Northanger Abbey. I have a correction to make, which I would have already made on the screen, but I want to say it. Uh, the main character's name is not Charlotte, <laughs> it's Catherine. I was close, you know, it's a C name. My takeaway is that you should not let the type of novels that you tend to read influence your perception of the real world. That's the, <laughs> I think that's the main takeaway of like the middle part of Northanger Abbey doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the novel <laughs> but that is an important lesson I think otherwise the drama of it all was entertaining it was a little slow to be fair and I had a lot of trouble like focusing on it so I did like it I, I liked Catherine she was very relatable I was really interested in her relationship with Tilney and I absolutely hated what's his face? Mr. Thorpe. I forget his first name. Um, Isabel's brother. John? I think. Yeah, because Catherine's brother is James. I also didn't like Isabella. I didn't like the Thorpes, pretty much, because they're they're just manipulative. It just goes back to me not liking manipulative characters. So I gave Northanger Abbey a 3.5 out of 5. I did enjoy it. I want the like pretty edition of the book to match my other ones. Pride and Prejudice is still better. I knew it was going to be. <laughs> so that's that first book of August done. I don't know what my next audiobook is going to be. I'm fairly certain it's going to be Lord of the Rings because dad told me I probably shouldn't listen to horns on audiobook. Not because of anything triggering, just because he played a little bit of the narrator that he has and I didn't like the, his voice. <laughs> so I will probably read horns and then my only other audiobook option for the month was actually a book I'm already reading. So I will probably start listening to Lord of the Rings on Tuesday. So that's the plan. I don't know if I'm ending the vlog here. I am going to read a little bit more of this today. Uh, so depending on, no, I, I will go ahead and say, I will come back later and tell you what I learned and rather vlog up then. So that way I'm holding myself accountable. morning uh I'm just gonna wrap the vlog up real quick <laughs> I did read about 40 pages I think of the baddest librarians of Timbuktu I'm still confused I understand that background information needs to be given right like you can't write about a particular subject matter and assume that everyone knows all the the history and background and of of what was happening around it but i'm learning a lot about like terrorist groups in africa 
which makes sense. I do get it. But it's been a lot. <laughs> like, all the chapters I read last night and a couple of the ones that I read before were about these different terrorist groups. Like, we haven't had a chapter about the librarians or, or a library since, I think, like, chapter 4 four and I'm on chapter nine now so like I said like I get it because background information does need to be given because I know I personally didn't know a ton about the different uh like political groups and terrorist groups and and different beliefs in Africa so that is important it's just like okay but I want to learn about librarians <laughs> so it's just like it if I tell someone I'm reading a book about librarians, but first I have to learn all about Al-Qaeda, seems a little confusing. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just, all right, you gotta learn about terrorists first, I guess. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to read more today. I read in my to-do list. I, I redo it every Sunday night. So today is the day I should actually get the most things done because I just have less things to do. Because usually whatever I don't, get done on a certain day carries over into the the next day and then and then the rest of the week so by sunday i'll give you an idea last night when i got home i was like all right i'm gonna do stuff for my to-do list i had 28 things on my list that's a lot <laughs> but it's also because as i said earlier this week i haven't really done anything for my to-do list except stuff that had like an actual like real deadline so oh. I'm hoping that today I can get like a decent amount of stuff done because I feel really behind on a lot of stuff. <laughs> but that's sort of the plan. I'm going to end this vlog here and start the next one. <laughs> As is my usual on Mondays. <laughs> but thank you for coming along with me. Uh, leave the comment if you've read any of the books that I've read this week. I'm trying to remember which ones. Schmutz. finish one on Wednesday? No, that was last week. Oh, I finished the, I'm like, I swear there's, there were two days where I finished two books in a row. I finished Pot Hunters Monday, Schmutz Tuesday. Okay. So Pot Hunters, Schmutz, Bass Librarians of Timbuktu, and then Northanger Abbey. So it, when you say it like that, it sounds like a really like productive week. I feel like this week has lasted a very long time <laughs> and so I don't actually feel as like productive as I probably should. <laughs> I confirmed with Siri, you know we have such in-depth conversations, that I will be starting Lord of the Rings tomorrow on audio and I have the three books as performed by Andy Serkis so that should be really cool. I'm predicting that by the end of the month, depending on how many other books from my TBR because like this is going to be my audiobook for the rest of the month it's going to be the three Lord of the Rings books but depending on how many of the physical books that I read probably the last couple of days in August I'm just going to listen to audiobooks and then also read the physical books but we'll see because that means I have to read a lot <laughs> usually I'm used to you know like buddying up and so I finished two books about the same time. It's not going to happen this month. Because <laughs> Fellowship of the Ring is 20 hours. So, that'll be fun. Like the video, subscribe, click the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. We're going to start Little Rings and I'm super excited. <laughs> Bye!